Sheriff Street Flats in Dublin's inner city, one of the most deprived areas in Ireland. Here, the burdens of life fall mainly on the women. And here in the North Wall Women's Centre, they're exploring themselves and their feelings in an effort to get some control over their own lives. You're going to read it then? Myself. Shall I read it myself? Oh, why not? You wrote it. I am a mother who's good and firm. I have three children who are always down. I wash and clean and comb their hair. I kiss and cuddle when they fall out of jail. <coughs> I have a husband who is very kind. He gives me money all the time. To keep the children well and fed and have plenty of covers upon their bed. There was a time I had to live to get my mind a bit at ease. <coughs> the children loved to miss me well, so I knew it was time to go back again. For many of the women, their only concept, as I see it, of their role in life is to be mothers. They don't have the options of wider careers and so on. And having a child seems to give a woman a status and a definition and a purpose. They're naturally very warm and spontaneous and a baby would be cooed over and loved and welcomed. Oh, God, I just have to get you. Nine weeks. It would be difficult to say exactly how many might be unmarried. Uh, about half of the women coming into the centre would be on their own, either because they're unmarried or because they're deserted. Well, I think when um, they're 16, I think that the force one does be a mistake, you know. Like, I don't think they go out and actually get pregnant on purpose. But after that, then, I if they get a fella and they, they get serious about them, they'll have another baby. But that'll be their lot. There's not many of them who go over to two children when they're unmarried. There is a, lot, a good few girls down here that is only young. They made a mistake. I think they just love babies, you know. They like to have children. You see, an awful lot of women down here, they always have their kids. You know, girls always have their babies with them, and they never really without their kids. You know, that's your, that's your life, your kids, and that's it. But the, the kids down here, like, their mummies, like, the likes of a few of them down here still has eight and nine babies. And the eldest one is kind of red, and, you know, the little one, they always have them. And I think... It, when they're looking at them and they could say, well, I could have a baby of my own as well. When they're looking at the mummies and all the babies they have, I'm like, my mother had ten. Yeah, it is a big change now. If my mother was alive now, my mother wouldn't approve. She definitely wouldn't. She wouldn't approve of girls living with, with men without being married. You know, years ago it was different. I mean, you'd, you'd get a fail over your face if, if you were after doing nothing wrong. <laughs> but it's really... It's really the, this day and age. It's accepted. Well, I say to anybody that wants to use contraception, it's up to them. You know, I'm not against contraception in any way for anybody. Everybody has their own thing. They want to do what they feel is best. I think every young girl should be on the pill. If, if no matter how young, 16, they should be on the pill. Because it does happen, no matter what. You, you get the feel of it, you know, so, I mean, it happened me, and I never thought it happened me, so, really, every young girl should be on the pill. You can't get the kyle when you, when you haven't got a baby, but the pill you can get. So, they, I think it's up to the mothers, really, to encourage their children. An awful lot of mothers won't sit down and talk. I mean, my mother never spoke to me about the facts of life. 
But I think when my young man gets a bit older, I will talk to her about it. I do. Um, I talk to mine about, about the pill and about safe sex. I mean, just, I mean, they're not stupid. They can look at the television now and all about AIDS. So I think it's very, very important. Safe, I mean, condoms and all. I mean, it is very important. Oh, a creche is absolutely crucial. Without it, the women would not be free to come into the centre. Most of them have very young babies. They wouldn't be happy to leave them with anyone else. They have the utmost confidence of the women in the creche. And they wouldn't be at ease to leave home so regularly for, say, three mornings a week, unless they knew that the children were nearby. It done the baby a lot of good, too. You know, she really loved going in, and that she enjoyed it, so... It was really getting away man, letting her have a bit of enjoyment too, instead of looking at me all day. She came more of herself, it, it brought her on more. She's handling the babies, and off they go into the other room, and the babies is mine, it's fed and changed. That's, well, two hours, two and a half hours morning, so it's a good break. Now, why are we actually in here today, then? The centre is going now for three years. It was begun in order to offer second chance education to mothers in this area, many of whom had had a very short time at primary school. <laughs> you remember that when you're telling your kids what to do? Do you? <laughs> or do you see your dear Could I tell you? <coughs> I said, I told you you're going to do that. Now get in and do it. Well, what do you think the effect is going to be on them? They're going to be the same as myself. Well, they had better school in the oh, yeah. They had missed out. And they wanted to be able to help their children, say, with homework to answer their questions. And so they were happy to evade of the opportunity of coming to somewhere where their own needs could be answered. Yeah, you feel like stupid in front of the kids, don't you? Yeah. Like the kids are saying, Ma, you don't know that. Do you know what I mean? They yeah. can't understand why I don't know that and I'm their mother. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> and that's why I'd like to learn more. Right. Well, I never learned that in school. Why? Because I used to be a daydreamer. I did? <laughs> you used to be? <laughs> yeah. Are you still? A bit. <laughs> But, um, but I've learned a good bit. You have? Yeah. Uh, why did you want to come? For the same reason, but I felt stupid. Because yeah. I never learned that when I was a child. I used to, to sit and dream, and when I was at home doing my homework, I used to be always watching the telly. I never mind the homework at all. You know, the involvement of a caring father has been found to be the most important factor in preventing delinquency. The whole point of the centre is that through the skills, the women would learn to grow in self-confidence, grow in self-awareness, grow in the ability to control their own lives, and ultimately, I would hope, grow in their ability to make a strong contribution to the local community. Another very important part of the literacy is helping the women to understand words that are very familiar, say, to me as a more middle-class person, but not familiar to the women. And very often, when they're reading even articles about themselves in the paper, they'll say, what does that mean? So the literacy helps them to understand words that are spoken about them by others. Well, I went to an awful lot of meetings. Like, I was in um, the Custom House docks there one time, and they were talking, and the words they were using I couldn't understand. So I asked them to explain them to me so I could explain it to the people when I come out of the meeting, which they did, and I find that's a great help. There was a time I'd just sit there and listen and come out and I wouldn't just have a clue what you were talking about, but now I do. Yeah, I find the literacy very interesting. I really like it a lot. Um, I always sat down with the kids with the homework, but you know the way they make you irritable if you're there for any length of time with them, but now I have more patience with me nine-year-old, you know. My what? My mammy. Come on. My mammy puts... Yeah. ...on the kettle. Yeah. 
I do say to one, you know what way to finish a sentence, as if they're not to go all on the one line. If you've to use the next line, finish a sentence on the next, the next line and um, space your words properly, you know, and all like that. The purpose of the literacy is not simply to help the women with the reading and writing, but also to bring them the point of giving them the words to be able to discuss the issues that are part of their own lives. Time for a bit of... Conversation. Right. Okay. Bella. 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 Serious. Yeah. Serious. They have a lot of feelings around their lives, but they're not used to expressing them. You wouldn't get married? No. Why not? Because you've no, no, not much of a life. I tie you down. Tie you down with kids. Just wasting my life on kids. From my ma's to married life, raising my own kids, yeah. from my mother's. And you don't get time to think? No. Just one kid after another. Why would you think... Oh, that's what life is all about. What? Just getting married, having kids, living happily ever after. <laughs> <laughs> I wish it didn't turn out. Well, all their money goes on kids in the house. That's your life, is your kids, isn't it? Pressing them, feeding them. And is that the same with every woman? Yeah. Some women are most women, 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 women are is. You know, men, I love having me two children. Mm -hmm. And I wouldn't like to not have them. I think that's what life is all about. No, I really enjoy that. I stay in seven nights a week, and I enjoy staying in and watching the telly. And I wouldn't change nothing. I just like things the way they are. I would think that a lot of the women don't really realise the drudgery and the hard work that they're getting into when they start a family. Perhaps they see it in terms of being able to have something of their own, totally their own for the first time, and also then perhaps being able to provide space through getting a flat, not just for themselves, but then also what very often happens is that a younger member of their own family, brother or sister, will move into that flat with them and ease the overcrowding in their parents' home. By 1982, 80% of UK households own, owned it a washing machine and 95% had a vacuum cleaner. But women are doing more housework than ever. This is because families change their clothes more often. And because today's mother gets practically no help from the rest of the household. Do you agree? I do. Yeah, I do, especially living in the inner city. I feel that the woman is the main person in the home, like she holds the home together. Uh, she does the more worrying about the kids. Like, she's always there, always there all the time, and the kids depend more, I feel, on the mothers than they do on the fathers. You're told. If my child falls off the bed, he'll let the road at me. I push that. That's in his mind. I it still goes back to the thing, even with kids. No matter what goes on, they say, Damara's there. She has to be there yeah. for everything we do. And if you go out, there's a big commotion. The house is upside down. And then when they come back to say, I'd be mad and say, why did you go in? You should have said in the mind of the kids. So therefore, a mother is supposed to be in the home day and night. Well, that's, that's wrong. I think because of the unemployment, the men don't have a strong position. Unemployment would certainly be running up to 80%. And this affects their relationships with the women. It's the women who have the clearly defined roles of caring for the children, looking after the home. And basically, it is the women who take, as far as I can see in most cases, who take the major decisions concerning the home and the children. There's not very much employment, you know, and the staff stand around corners, and I really don't know how to get by, but they do. Well, the, the younger men who, in their 30s and 35s, and an awful lot of them just be uh, in the dumps. We have a dumps down here. Uh, I call them pickeroonies, I don't know, but they go over and see what you can get out of that. That'll help them, and there's an awful lot of men into the pigeons. We have an awful lot of pigeon lofts down here, and there's an awful lot into sheriff's football as well. So there's a few pubs and a few sports and the dumps as well. They get by on as well, you know? Well, I feel every man wants a job, you know. 
They feel degraded because they can't walk, they can't get walk. They're standing around, they're going into the pubs, sitting over a drink. They, they might be borrowing for a drink and coming out drunk, just going home, you know? My dad's day. It's a great time. Uh, my dad was a docker. He used to do the gold and the cows. And there was factories with sherries. We had the salt factory across the way. We had loads, a good few factories. And it just all died. Just all died down. Don't know why it ever happened to it. I remember my brothers walking on the ships. We used to go down every Sunday morning at 9 o'clock and meet the boat coming in. We used to be brought on to feed the seagulls. The cook he was. The other fellow was a steward. My dad used to go away with the cattle. Nothing like that now. It's all gone. Oh, yeah, it's completely changed. I mean, if you walked around the quay, there was always a boat in sight. You know, me and my dad was a docker too. But now that you walk around the quay, you see nothing. There's very few even walking on it. There are almost no opportunities for work for men in the flats. Simply giving your address as coming from Sheriff Street means that you will be blocked immediately from employment. Any employment opportunities that there are are really for the women. And that would be mainly very underpaid office cleaning. The amount of money provided by the social welfare system to the women, whether it is deserted wives allowance or whether it's single mothers allowance, simply is not enough to get by. So they operate on a system of borrowing from one another. They operate on a system of sometimes having to get into debt. And they need the combining of, say, the unmarried mother's allowance with a partner's dole allowance in order to have enough to get by. I wouldn't well, say we're starving. Yeah. Well, I don't get stakes the way I used to when my mother was alive, but we're not starving, you know. We survive the best way we can. Say one girl gets paid of a Tuesday or the labour, and I get paid of a Thursday. Well, I'll call over and ask her for a loan until Thursday. That'll do me till Thursday, and then when I get my money, she gets out weekend. Mess just out of that. Well, the, well, the single mother and if she has a partner on the labour, he'd get 40 a week and she'd get 60. I think it's with one child, 60. So that'd be 100, 100 pounds. When that girl gets married, her money automatically drops down to 85 pounds. I think it's 10 pounds off him and 10 pounds off her. It's 20 pounds, really, that you're losing. So that's the reason probably why a lot of people don't get married. One or two of the women have said that the men have remarked to them that they're more cheeky now than they were before. Uh, I think it has given them a sense of their own self-worth. The difference that it has made to you in your relationships then with the men in your lives. Yeah. Or the men out of your lives. My husband said I got very brave. He <laughs> <laughs> said you got very brave? <laughs> Tell us more. I give him back cheek when I never do. <laughs> she got that cop on from me. I told her to do that. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, did you think any more about that? This club made us independent. We yeah. now we can sit down and read and write, and we can go about things where we want to. That's what it's had to give and us. We can sort out areas yeah. without panicking. That's given us great independence. <laughs> well, a woman has a say now, more so she than she did years ago. I mean, the man was always the one to dominate, the woman couldn't. But, I mean, in regards of if you want to keep your man, my man used to always say this, is to feed him I'm in the bed all the time. That's how there was loads of kids years ago. So this, this day and age, you can turn around and say no, and that's it, he has to accept. But years ago, you couldn't, you'd get a dig. Years ago, if you said no. My man used to tell me she used to get digs. The it helps you more to stand up for yourself. You know, if you have a man, you, you, you kind of go by him all the time. Well, well you are, your mother learned you that, always go by your, your man. But the centre kind of helped you that way that you could come home and say, well, well, if he wanted sex and you didn't, you didn't feel up to it, well, that was it. You didn't feel up to it. You could tell him that, you know? It's my anniversary tomorrow, girls. Well, I'm going to divorce tomorrow. You're not divorced. divorced. Like I mean, the women now and the ladies now changing from we were growing up. Like it's not the way it was years ago. Like the woman had to be there, even if they were going through a bad patch. Like they had to stay with one another. 
But are they were happy, Anna? Yeah. I think it was just a thing and then there's... Yeah, yeah. What's, what's like now they're all open. It's more different now. Like, it's not new. I'm awaiting my husband. Like, I'm glad in a sense that I am awaiting. Because I wouldn't be able to go through that life. If we're going through a bad patch, like, try their best to keep the marriage there if they are really happy, if they do love one another. Mm -hmm. But other than that, if they don't, if it's really one partner, they're better off breaking up. We applied to the corporation to give us two flats in the Sherry Street flat complex and they agreed and they also renovated those two flats for us. Our very first funding came from the Catholic Social Services Conference. Then we got some funding from the Eastern Health Board and from the American Ireland Fund. And then last year we got major funding from the Combat Poverty Agency. Very early on in the planning, we realised that we had to have a strong input of local people. Uh, minutes on the matters arising. Everybody agreed on the minutes? Yeah. 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 The next item is the opening day. We knew that Rita Doolan was very involved in the local community. So we asked her would she come on the working party with a group of three others. Rita works with me as assistant coordinator. She helps to keep us very much to the point. Her advice in dealing with situations has been invaluable. Oh, we got the two hairstyles, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> no, we got two hairstyles for the men, so you won't need the men. <laughs> Francis can get that if he wants. Oh, yeah, we'll be poor a bit. Also on the working party, then, we have the community worker with the corporation, somebody from the Eastern Health Board, somebody from Barnardo's, and myself. I think I have learned an enormous amount about community from seeing the people down here. Their, the closeness of their living together, their sharing with one another, their tolerance of one another, their generosity to one another in time of need. Um, all of this is very real and very of the moment, and they're not expecting returns. Well, my mother still is in Lawrence's mansion. I'm in Lawrence's mansion. My sister is in Lawrence's mansion. My niece is in Lawrence's mansion. <laughs> we have a good crowd now, like family, and we had another two, but they got houses. They're over in the new houses at the moment. So we really try to stick together. Uh, they're all so close to one another. I mean, there's nieces, there's nephews, there's aunts, there's uncles, mothers and fathers, grandmothers and grandfathers, they're all around. We were that kind of community. It was a community one time that there was no one cook, no outsider really came into the area. It was all cousins and aunts and uncles. I, from the time I grew up, my mother's key was always in our door. And my key is never out of me door. It's always the only time it comes out is that night and it goes back in first thing in the morning and nobody ever never came in well most nights i go to bed i do leave my key in the door might and it might be another night i'll take it out i leave the kids bikes outside the door some nights i might be just too tired to take them in and i'll go to bed and just leave them and they don't interfere with their own i mean people in the community well i leave my key in i have come home last week and let my door open all night you know so we really never get bothered by them. They'd never touch us, like, you know, I mean, they're supposed to be this and that down here, but they're not really to, to the community. My neighbour now, I've got good, good neighbours on my balcony. I mean, I walk out in that balcony and I go out, at least I'd stand and chat to them. I, I'd never walk out and see no one. You know that way, there'd be always someone on the balcony to have a chat with. We think we are nosy, but we're not. We just automatically do go out into the balcony to have a chat. You know, so the community feeling with the neighbours even is, is great. Sylvia, where are you going? Come on, Mr. Mark. Over a time, you'll be over after. You never, uh, if you are in bad humour, you'll soon get out of it from the balcony because someone will come along and talk to you. I think many of the women, having lived so long and only in the North Wall area, would not be comfortable outside of that area don't feel at home with people whom they would perhaps readily see as outsiders and uh, certainly would envisage
being scattered to other areas of the city as really being sent to the ends of the world. Well, the flats, as you know, you can go in, have you, go on your balcony and you have. When you go over to the houses, they have a front room and a back room. And when you go into the back room, they're in that back room and you don't see anybody. They're, they're literally sitting there on their own until, say, oil go over. But they're, they're not as um, neighbourly as the flats. Do you understand what I mean? They're great neighbours, but you don't go in and sit down and have your chat like you do in the flats. Yeah, well, Phil is a uh, sister, she's a sister of mine and she lives over in the new houses. It's uh, about five minutes across the way and gets up in the mornings now, say, the, the centre isn't on this, this morning and there's no school. But she'll go across to her daughter in the flats, Marina. And Marie put on the kettle. Phil will give me a shout and I'll come out my window and we'll come over and have a cup of tea. And that's the morning field. What did she drink, Lonnie? I think she's drinking stag, was it? Bulmers. or something. That's great. Like, it's a great feeling like that. You can just say, well, I'm going over to my nieces and I'm mad in all the stairs. I think it's terrific. I'll put up on the table. Sandra the nun, she starts singing Humpty Dumpty. But, ah! <laughs> but I tell you, she had the whole job rocking her hands. She had her hands. Yeah. Very good. Yeah. How many around there? Packed. Attention! The sewing tutor is Brita Hanna, and she works with the women in helping them make mainly things for babies and cots and prams. Not many, in fact very few of the women would have sewing machines at home, though many more of them would have worked in sewing factories when they were a bit younger. So they would, most of them, have a certain basic skill in working on a machine. The women really enjoy making pretty things and there's great admiration when something is finished. They love to have things nice. They have a great sense, I find, taught me a lot about the sense of what is nice, what is pretty. What do you think? Yeah, they are. It's a lot of hard work, but they're well worth it. It's for Rachel. Ah, she'll love it. That'll keep her lovely and warm in the winter, won't it? Three paddies now, isn't it? Yeah, three. They're delighted over in it. The street was beautiful one time. You know, you'd walk into it, kind of, you, it was a place that you wasn't seeing, and then when people did come in and have a look at it, I mean, it was beautiful to look at. There was loads of shops, and the corporation just, I think they had it in their mind that we were going to be demolished, and we'll put them all out. It's really, it's really disgraceful the way it's had to get in. The past 15 years, it's had to be run down terrible. I don't feel it, I don't, think that the corporation care anymore. Maybe it's just their way of letting the place get run down so bad that they think they can run the people out of it, you know? The maintenance is just terrible. But the squalor, I think, reflects the, the loss of hope, the high level of unemployment, and maybe a kind of a hope on the part of the people down here that if the flats get into too bad a condition, then the corporation will be forced to give them houses. We have nice homes, so once we have a nice home, we don't care what the outside looks like. Why nice home? I think we were brought up. I mean, years ago, the flats was gorgeous. And all the mothers, they all held off, as I told you a few minutes ago, like they washed the stairs. And they liked the homes. And I think it goes on from that, like the way you're brought up. If you're brought up in a nice home, you'll keep a nice home around you. I mean, I love my flat and I like to keep it nice. It doesn't bother me what the outside of the flats look like. It does look terrible, but my home is my home, and that's it. I like to keep it the way, the best I can. Oh, look at that. People bury to get things in the home. They get, they get things out by the week for to have a nice home, because they were always used to a lovely home. It's, it's really got put down to that you're used to things, you know, and you just don't like to see a home getting run down when you're not being used to a good home for so long. Every single Christmas, 
almost all of the women would redecorate their own flats. You'd see them from October coming down from town with their rolls of wallpaper. That they really enjoy doing. They take a great pride in their own homes. Some of the women live in three bedroom flats, but most of them have only two bedrooms. And that does create problems of overcrowding. And I think explains why so much of the life in the community is lived on the street. There simply is nowhere else for people to be. Oh, yeah. And how are you managing with the baby now? Oh, grand. Yeah. And with, is there enough room like in the flat? No room. No room. Okay. So many of them now, where is she now? She's still sleeping with me in the bed. The baby's on his own in the sitting room. So there's and so many of you is now in one bed, like? Three was in the one bed. And then when I'm waiting her up to go to school, she won't go up for school because she's tired. Mm -hmm. yeah. Oh, look, wait. She yeah. stays awake because I'm on. Thomas got a room to herself. Yeah, no. we have them. Amanda's in that room. Amanda's in that room. Yeah. Amanda's 15 and Thomas is 19. The two of them is in a set room. In the one room? In the one room. And what age is Amanda? 15. Yeah. And Thomas? 19. Oh, that's right, yeah. Terrible crammed up behind her. Really. What about you, Lola? Many in your room. Oh, 19. It wasn't the one there. <laughs> <laughs> Great time, Dean. Can't tell me to go on the pair, I tell you. Go on the trail, not the pair. There's no idea that I'm on a party. You might not have let anyone into a room. I was there bunks in one room, right? Yeah. And I've doing it. Yeah. And then I have a cot and a double bed. The baby's in with you. 19, yeah. Don't ask me about it. All right. I'm going to get it. I'll be mad at the water. <laughs> <laughs> you think you're on a boat in all those rooms? That many beds. Oh, if you look about the kids, you've loads of rooms to hide. The cookery tutor is Carol McCartney, and she works with the women, helping them to make dishes that they say they want to learn. We don't have as yet a strong emphasis on either nutrition or economy. Maybe I could risk saying that to some extent those are middle class values. The women want to learn things that they like and they want to have the achievement of actually cooking those things themselves rather than having to buy them from the shops. So the main point of the cookery is the sense of achievement in creating something that is theirs, that they can take home, that they can share with their families, and that people can say, gosh, that's great, how do you make that? There were mixed reactions to the men about the centre when we began. There was a fair amount of slagging about, well, what would they be taking home from the cookery session? I think the men are very happy when the women come home with something nice for them to eat. Did you give us a little taste, just your phone? Huh? No, not here. Here, hold on. Yeah. Michelle, do you want cheese? Yeah. Michael? No, I don't think. Little Michael? Yeah. Carmel? Yeah, Ma. No, not all of the women would practice at home what they have learned in the centre. That would be because they have very small kitchens. They sometimes don't have even very, very basic equipment. Um, and as yet, perhaps they wouldn't be geared to immediately applying at home what they have enjoyed doing in the centre. That would be a development that would happen down the line, but it can't happen immediately. No. Yeah, I mean. And then your garlic. The what? Push with the brown spit. That looks lovely. It is. It's nice. Some years ago, the corporation built a community sports centre on the playground for the use of the local community. Perhaps it's a bit disappointing that not all that many of the local men or women avail of the facilities there. They're not really perhaps into sports except, except perhaps football or minding the pigeons. Uh, the playgrounds are absolutely invaluable in providing the children with a space where they're well supervised and where they can enjoy themselves and play games.
I feel myself that the children who come from Sheriff Street start off with the cards marked against them. Where they're born, the name of the place, uh, the fact that there's such a high unemployment level means that it is much more difficult for them to succeed, whatever success means, in their lives than for others. When they're in primary school, you can get you like you can talk to your kids like and what you say goes. But when they get to a certain age, they get out of hand. Well, they try to get out of hand till you put them down again, and then. You're the worst in the world for doing that. It was very hard at first when they started coming into their teens. You know, different opinions, different attitudes. But you just have to try and do the best you can for them, you know, to help them along. Always give them a bit of encouragement, right from wrong. You can't do any more than that. I mean, you can't watch your kids 24 hours around the clock. I know that. But I'm raiding two teenagers now at the moment, and I'll do the best I can for them. And as long as they're in my care, they won't be out running around. I'll just do the best until I can't do any more for them after that. That's up to them. It's very hard when you do get to 16 because, you, 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 as I say, you keep worrying about them all the time. When they are 16, like, they don't want to go on in school. Like, they get browned off at school, so they try to get a first course. Well, if you, if you do get a course, you'll get a few at the corner and start saying, uh, you know, slagging and all this. And the other kids kind of have to either say, will I or won't I? But I think it's up to their mothers, really, that and their fathers to say, you will. You'll go out and walk. I like, we're all walkers. All my family, well, my brothers and my father was all walkers. And it's horrible to look at a 16 and a 17 year old hanging around your sofa all day. It really is horrible. You're always worrying, always worrying. Like, if you're in at night and your kids are out and they're 17, you can't call them up at 10 o'clock and say, get. They'll, they'll, they'll just look at you, you know. But uh, I think it's it's very hard when you're in the house and your kid is out and you hear a rob car and you're worrying, is it them that's in it? Sheriff Street does have a very bad reputation. Most people have only heard about it in connection with, say, joyriding. But I think people who don't live in the area don't realise the worry that the joyriding causes, in particular to the mothers in the area and the anger that it causes that a very small group can be bringing such a bad name to the whole area because it is only a very small group who are involved. I mean, it's not, there's only a couple in the street that joy rides. It's not the whole community. There's a couple of vandals, that's all. One or two, maybe, that'll give the whole street a bad name, which they don't realise they're giving the street a bad name at this time now that they're looking to demolish us. I mean, they should really think that they want to get the likes of us out of the street altogether. And um, I feel the same way as Pauline on joyriding. I mean, I live on the bottom and I'm just tormented because I'm in Lerdens' Mansions and Lerdens' Mansions is the corner where they all gather, you know. It's just that I always have a fear that um, somebody's either going to be killed or one of the joyriders is going to be killed herself. And naturally, when the rob car comes around, I'm nearly always the first to. I mean, I don't want to walk out my front door and see either anybody from the flats walking through or any of them joyriders behind the wheel of that car being killed because I don't think I'll just be able to take it. I think that people have used this area as a dumping ground for things like cars. If they want to get a deal on the insurance, people have been known to leave cars down here so that they'll be burnt by the lads. Like, I have a brother-in-law that was out the window one night and this woman got out of, of the car in Mary Street and took her bike out of the back of it and put a light to the car and went off. I mean, a woman now... I mean, if the kids see a woman doing that now, they'd say, well, if she's allowed to do I think we should be as well. The crime that is in the area is not against persons. 
It's against property. Um, the lads rob because they're bored, because they know that the people at, he at home need the stuff that they can get off the backs of the lorries. And they know that um, also it is really their only way of getting a perk out of the system. Most other people, no matter what position they're in, they've some kind of perks open to them. The people down here have none. And what they can get from robbing is a perk. But they've nothing better to do, nothing else to do, just stand around. So if they see if they see a box of gear on a truck, naturally they're going to run after it. And it's not now the men's pocket on the truck would be out of companies or off the government. It's all the one. So they still can't, they have to survive some way. They need to go out and rob. They need to go out and rob to have a few bob in their pocket. I mean, they can't get work. So they have to be independent to their self, you know. So they just go out and get wherever they can. Or what the fellas do, Rob, and that. Like, they, they come up to you and they'd ask you to buy it. Well, you're not going to say no if the thing is £20 and don't, and they're giving it to you for a tenner. Which it helps the community as well in that sense, you know. But, like, you wouldn't... I wouldn't be able to go up and pay £20 for three pairs of jeans. I mean... My kids are 16 and 17 and 13, and that's what jeans is today. So if they come along with three pairs of jeans, you're paying £20 for the three of them, which helps you terrific. I wouldn't have the money to go up town and keep up with my kids because they, they're getting older now. And I do take the chance of that, and if I get it, it's just... I have to. There has to be money coming from somewhere. So if we have to buy it, if we don't buy it, then they'll be left for us, and there'll be problems in their home. You know, I always take a little bit of stuff. If there's little dresses or anything going for my kids, I always take them. I, I don't want to deny that. I've been surprised to find how many of the women are very slow to take any tablets or any pills. Uh, the hard drug pushers have been kept out of the area by the soft drug pushers. And they are known as such to the women who keep a very close eye on what is happening. We've been very fortunate to have much, much less of a drug problem than there is in other similar areas. Are you listening? We play a game. You know the, the um, advert game, you know where somebody goes outside the, the door and we'll choose an action and they come in and they... The drama tutor you know, is Fiona Nolan and our, uh, drama is really crucial in helping the women to build up their self-confidence. Many of them at the start said, oh, no, I would never act in anything, or I could never stand up and talk in front of somebody else. But I think that has been the subject that has most helped the confidence of the women. Anybody got a word? Um, snobby. No, oh, yuppie. Miserable. Well, snobby. Snobby. Mm. Okay, fine. Irene, Mum. I'll start with Susan. Susan, brush your hair this way. Well, the drama class, when I think of it, I was never interested in drama even in school. But it took me about three or four weeks, was it, to get used to it. And I tell you, I just enjoy it. It's really great. I mean, the games that she plays, there's a game like, you know, concentration, and it is very good. And you really get into it. And it's great even for relaxing yourself, you know, all the tension goes there. And it's great for your memory, you know, for remembering things. Um, stage fright I would have got. There were some things I would speak out about and there were some things I'd say, well, I keep my mouth shut, I won't say anything. But now, it's given me that extra bit of confidence that I will say now what I feel, regardless of what people think of me. And you're working away in the back office. Mm -hmm. So don't be, don't make too much noise around them, but we have to be there. But somebody go on the script. We started on a play, and I mean, the play is really terrific. I mean, we're going to get up in front of the audience that we didn't think we will ever get up in front of. That really was something to us that we never thought we'd do anything like that. And we really rehearsed that play really well. We're, we're really doing well in it. You know, so it did a lot for me, really. Well, the drama certainly would allow the women to get in touch with and express their own feelings about 
themselves and the position that they are put in by such systems as, for example, the social welfare system. How do you like that? A five-pound food voucher. I told you, a three shillings and a three fucking bushes. I want to do that. <laughs> Get your boss and HD with this lady. Okay, we'll leave it there. The, I'm not saying that now. No, well, it, it doesn't matter. If we drop lines, we drop lines. You have to come in quicker with quicker. that line. Yeah. Yeah. You here for supplementary welfare benefits? Yeah. Well, read that. I can't read. I'm just letting. Have you any cattle? No. Have you any lamb? The social welfare is a system that asks them a lot of questions in a very public way. And this play allows the women to say how they see the system and to say it in a public way. Now, my thought, we sorted it out for you. What we're going to do is we're going to give you a voucher, a five-pound food voucher. How do you like that? I told you, a three children not three fucking bodies. I want to <laughs> I think it provided them with a safety valve, a humorous way of getting at or talking about a system which they find very much puts them down. The women were a bit scared at first of putting on a performance for the community or for anybody. But then they were delighted with themselves and the people in the local community are saying it's great to have the centre, it's great to have something that's good about the place. I've had a few of the men saying to me the centre is one of the best things that has happened in this community for a long time. After three years of the centre, we have very few answers, I'd have to admit, and very many questions. We're talking about changing attitudes, changing life skills. This takes a number of years, and how to go about that is the major question. We are just hoping that we will have time ahead of us and a lifespan in the centre sufficient to, to try to answer more of those questions. It looks like as if we may not have the time to try to find the answers to these questions. The government has decided that the flats are to be detenanted and demolished. This will obviously put an end to the centre as we know it. And also it will put an end to the community that exists here. Because there is no way that the community can survive outside of here.